Okay, now, our speaker. Our speaker is the executive director of the Smart Chicago Collaborative, a civic organization devoted to making lives better. Really be great if it was the other way around. Uh, in Chicago through technology. Prior to Smart Chicago, he was co-founder of and people person for Every, Every Black, a neighborhood news and discussion site. Moving right along, uh, by the way, it's a three-page uh, Young guy has a lot to say. Since 2002, <laughs> he has run a number of independent web projects, including the CTA Alert, CTA Tweet, City Payments Org. He's developed dozens of websites for nonprofit schools and small businesses using easy to use and inexpensive tools such as weblogs, W-I-K-I-S, and social networking sites. In June of 2011, he was honored by the White House as a champion of change for technology and innovation. Luckily, this is not the city club of, say, Dallas, because it would really be a problem with all these Obama awardees here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Daniel X. O'Neill, who happens to have a degree from UIC in English and Anthropology. Perfect setting for this group. Daniel, give him a round of applause. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Green. Good thing I wrote, wrote something down. Um, I'm really sorry, Jay's not here. I'm going to miss all the cryptically inappropriate comments. Um, but uh, it's on video, so that's all right. Um, uh, so hello, and, and, and thanks for, uh, for having me here. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the need for investment in the digital lives of all. So I'm going to tell you about our, uh, the mission and the principles and the strategy of our organization at Smart Chicago, as well as the, the structure and the funding uh, of what we do and how we do it. But uh, first, for a minute, I want to talk to you about where you're from. It's one of the best questions you can ask someone. Sometimes the question can have a parochial take on it. We've seen that, right? is if you're just asking people, like, what neighborhood are you from? And then there's the unfortunate, uh, you know, we don't want nobody, nobody sent that from. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is where are you from? Where do you start from? Where do you make decisions from? Where's your heart at? Where's your hearth? Where's the fire that helps you move? So uh, I'm from uh, 313 Elsden Street uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is the, uh, this is where it was. Oh, let me show you this one. That's 313 Elsden Street. That's the Google Street View. It's not there anymore because a uh, fire knocked it down and a fireman was killed uh, trying to put out the fire. I don't want to give you the impression that I had a deprived or poor childhood. I did not. We lived in all sorts of neighborhoods, uh, and I've loved it all. Um, three of my brothers, uh, Kevin, uh, Michael, and Patrick are here, so they can, you know, if you think I'm bullcrapping you, you can ask them, and they'll set you straight. But yeah, I'm, so I'm a fr from a place where, uh, you know, ball fields are overgrown with weeds, where Catholic elementary school was uh, a savior to me. Uh, a place where service was central. Um, lastly, I come from poetry. I have written a, a few books of poetry and uh, published them on the internet and in the real world. And that bio, yeah, I think you guys got that off the internet. I didn't send that over. You know, there's infinite space on the internet. <laughs> so that's why I talked. But I didn't send that. Uh, you probably found that over there. It's crazy what you see on the internet. Um, but uh, that's where I come from. Uh, that's the most important message I can give you. That's not what I'm, obviously. That's, I have more important things to talk about. Uh, let's talk about what I really want to talk about. The Smart Chicago Collaborative. 
Smart Chicago Collaborative is a civic organization devoted to improving lives in Chicago through technology. That's what we do. We're a teeny tiny unit run out of the Chicago Community Trust, a place they call uh, the garage uh, that was designed uh, by Terry Mazzani uh, uh, to hold a bunch of goofballs uh, like us and other collaboratives uh, and funding uh, uh, things that we have over at the Trust. They do a lot of great things. I think you already know that. You don't need me to tell you that. We have anywhere from five to nine full and part-time consultants at any given time um, helping us to do all the work that we're going to cover today. Um, we have just three employees of the, of the Smart Chicago Collaborative. Me, uh, Kyla Williams on the right, checking her phone. <laughs> She's our director of operations. Uh, uh, Sonia Marziano, our project coordinator. She runs a ton of stuff for us. We have a very deliberately light structure. Uh, and it works for us. We have dozens of people, and many of them here I'm going to talk about their work in organizations that we work with, uh, but this is, this is our core. And I'd be totally remiss if I didn't mention Christopher Whitaker, who is uh, a longtime consultant for us. He does very important work, uh, runs, and also runs some, some uh, stuff through the Code for America Regional Brigade for us. So pretty much every organization has a set of principles or a mission statement or some other blah, blah that they put on their website and then forget about, right? Um, we actually live by our principles. And I repeat them at the start of every meeting. Uh, they're part of every decision we make. Our principles are uh, technology, open, everyone in Chicago. And I want to run through these with you so that we can understand each other. You can see where I'm from. Everything we do relates to technology. We are of and about the internet. But most of all, we believe in the transformative power of the internet to make things better uh, and to build the economy for all. And, and we view this as a simple matter of equality and equity and justice. It's really not complicated. Uh, so we're open. In the technology industry, the primary manifestation of the word open is an open source code. And we have dozens of repositories on GitHub. You should get on GitHub and hang out with us and get code. For every piece of software we've made in the last three years, we have it up there. As some of you know, however, it's really easy to throw code over a, over a fence and run as fast as you can in the other direction. Uh, so that's not open. Uh, we support our code. And we, uh, you know, I put my uh, phone number on, on uh, I don't know, I got on probably about 70 or 75 websites, my cell phone number. I love answering my phone. <laughs> don't call me right now, I'm busy. Um, but call me. I like, I like answering my phone. Um, so we get a lot of calls about our code, and we, we answer the phone. We support them. We support them for all comers. Um, but being open means more than using a particular software license for your software. It means truly being open to others, having open processes so that people know what you're doing, how you're doing it, and how they can affect what you're doing. Open minds so that we can actually change our entire way of doing things if we discover it from someone. This is really hard. It's hard to develop methods, and it's hard to open yourself enough to, be, to, to receive this. This is about allowing others in. Wherever in may be, there's lots of ins. This is one in, isn't it? Wherever it is, we try to make ways for people to come in because we have to. This is the value of listening to people and asking them, where are you from? I'm relatively new to philanthropy in the world of nonprofits here in Chicago. Um, I've seen a lot of organizations that gain strength and efficiency from a laser focus. So that can be geographical or all about age or uh, about a, a particular activity type. At Smart Chicago, because our work is rooted in technology, our focus is on everyone. We've seen that there's a great value in the network. The network, the aggregation of humanity and human attention is in fact the great creator of corporate valuations, if not actual value. Snapchat, a photo messaging application developed in California is worth about 10 
billion dollars. That's bananas. It makes no sense whatsoever, except when it's viewed in the context of the network. In order for us to do our work, to create technology that has broad popularity and utility that improves people's lives and their relationships with each other and with governments, we have to focus on everyone. Chicago is one of our values, and, and it's, a, it's our middle name. All of our work is done here. It's the place we call home, a place that has unique and thriving ecosystem, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, for our work. From our base here, we serve as a model for others. So we do our work in Chicago, we're from Chicago, we care about Chicago, we also care about uh, uh, other places and expanding this kind of work because it has to occur everywhere. We've gotten lots of attention for our model uh, because it's working. So we find ways to help nationally without letting the attention distract us from our work. So it's nice to have guiding principles, so let's talk about what we actually do. Uh, we work on, a, we do three things. Mm -hmm. We focus on three areas of interest. Access, skills, and data. As I said, we're a civic organization devoted to improving lives in Chicago. We work on increasing access to the internet, improving skills for using the internet, and developing meaningful products from data, which we just construe as content. Uh, just briefly on each, right? If, if you're not connected to the internet, it's very difficult for technology to be of much use for you. Um, there's, there's, it's not impossible because we know um, in our work that there are lots of examples where proxies, whether it's a family member or a care provider or some other person who cares about someone who's not connected, that the internet affects them. But we start with the idea that access, which sets us uh, with access, and this sets us apart from uh, uh, a lot of other organizations and, and people focused on, on just making stuff. I'm going to tell you about some of the stuff we make because it's fun and why, why shouldn't we have fun, right? But uh, I really want to focus you on uh, these bigger concepts and the infrastructure that we're trying to make. Uh, we also have very few levers to work with on access. Um, but as you can imagine, uh, with you know, three people and, and, and no, no fiber laying around, uh, we have to care about this. This is at our base. Um, skills. If you can't use the internet, being connected to it isn't that much of a, a big deal, right? Uh, we've probably seen this before uh, in our own families. If you have access but you're afraid of using it or can't figure out how to get an email account, it can't be of much use. And this goes up and down the spectrum. Not just people in, 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 their, in our skills. We care about everybody's on-ramps. We like to think of this in terms of on-ramps. Whether you're starting with nothing or you're a mid-career professional, looking to a, do a, a tech startup. That matters to us. We need to have on-ramps for people to, uh, to move from where they are to where they want to be. In data, we construe, uh, construe data as content because there has to be something meaningful to look at. There has to be something meaningful to look at once you're connected to the internet and you have the skills to use it. If, you're, if, if, if you are and you're not doing anything to improve your life or the life of others, then we really haven't gotten that far. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our structure. We're founded and guided by three organizations. The MacArthur Foundation, the Chicago Community Trust, and the City of Chicago. So that's two philanthropies and one municipality. And I report to a board that consists of leaders from each of these organizations. Uh, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, I know we're all very familiar with their work, um, led by Julia Stash, uh, who's on our advisory committee. They're, 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 they're both a conceptual leader and a funder for our work. They do an enormous amount of funding and, action, and, and work here in Chicago. They're an international organization, but they're in the game here. And, and, I, and I can't stress how important that is whenever I talk to others about that. Um, uh, uh, Julia and, and you know what? People in this room helped. Do you remember when you helped make uh, this report, the 2007, uh, the City of the Networks? There you are, of course. Uh, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm uh, 
really appreciative, Shelley, of you and others who, uh, when I look at the, you know, those, that list of people who uh, you see in all sorts of PDFs, there's a lot of PDFs in our life, right? <laughs> Comes over the wire, you click on the internet, and goes and, you know, download or Acrobat, and I'm updating it, and uh, a lot of PDFs. Sometimes these PDFs actually do something. This is one of them. In 2007, this thing right here, the city of the networks, led to a lot of great things. Um, we're going to talk about some of them. Um, so I really appreciate that, both of those pieces. Chicago Community Trust, that's where I go to work every day. Uh, they provide housing, right? It's where I go to work. Uh, it's uh, in a space designed by the CIO Tom uh, Irvine, who's on our operations committee. Um, as many of you know, uh, having worked with the trust, I can't imagine there's many people in this room who haven't been affected in some way by the Chicago Community Trust. Uh, they're the best fiscal managers anywhere, which can often be, you know, that's a great phrase, but that can be, lead to uh, uh, some scrutiny. Uh, uh, <coughs> I appreciate that, because I'm just some guy hanging out on the internet. Uh, who wants to hang out with me? Nobody. But then you got the you know Chicago Community Trust, and people know what they're doing, and it works out pretty good. Um, Frank Suhu, uh, Mark Finke, they're really important to our operation. They uh, uh, help us quite a bit with uh, finances and spending and, and, and uh, stuff like that. We're working with Susie Connor on a jump drive uh, for youth affected by incarceration. We're starting even further to deepen our work inside the actual work of the trust. And of course, Terry Mazzani, who oversees the trust, he's on our advisory committee, and um, he's in charge of uh, every dollar that goes out of our organization. Um, so we're really appreciative. And it's another real serious component about what we're doing. Lastly, it's uh, the city of Chicago. With all due respect to my colleagues and other units of government, uh, the city is, um, you know, a pretty important policy lever uh, in in the region, and they're a critical partner for having impact and, and getting things done. I've learned that when our technology directly engages, and I'll show you some of these projects, the ones that directly engage with city services, that directly engage with a process uh, or a procedure or a technology inside the city, those are the ones that make the most impact. Because otherwise, again, we're just some goofballs hanging out over here. It's this connection. It's actually getting into it. Brenna Berman, uh, the CIO and the Commissioner of the Department of Innovation and Technology, is on our advisory committee. Um, and I know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Green, we're going to hear from Brenna soon, later this month. I really look forward to that. You know, it's really worth noting that Brenna is carrying on the work of uh, the great work of two men. John Tolva, who's here at this table, uh, and who was the first uh, city member of the advisory committee of the, Chicago, of the Smart Chicago Collaborative, and has done an enormous amount, of, have an, had an enormous amount of uh, focus, uh, impact on our focus. Um, so that's one guy. Uh, the other guy that she's doing the work of is Brett Goldstein, who's spoken before you before. Uh, uh, it takes a special person to roll up three C titles under her office. Of course, Tom Schenk, uh, doing the work of Chief Data Officer, is inside uh, Do It as well. Uh, all of this, all of these titles rolled up under, under Brenna Berman, you don't even have a Twitter account. <laughs> Believe this? This day and age, you could do that. It's amazing. Wow. All right. Who likes money? I've learned that people like money. People like, uh, uh, so let's talk about money. Our primary sources of funding today have been from philanthropy, okay? MacArthur is a primary essential funder, giving us what we need to get going. The trust, as I mentioned, uh, they uh, have critical back office support as well as work with grants, and that's accelerating now as our work becomes more closely aligned. Um, the Auth OSA Sprague Memorial Institute, represented here by Jim Alexander, has been the, the primary architect, and again, I can't influence, uh, I can't emphasize this enough, this idea that the, that the people we work with and who give us money are also architects and partners in what we do. People say that a lot, and, I, and I, it's not always true. Um, this is true. Uh, the, the Sprague Memorial Institute is 
basically conceived of every health program that we have. And they're immense. They're, they're really, really great things. Um, and we've picked up the, the flag for them. Um, uh, the, J the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation is an essential growing partner uh, focused on civic engagement. We've been uh, funded by uh, them for years through the Chicago Community Trust because they're a partner in their community information work. So again, that kind of connectivity, that kind of stuff that was already going on a long time before I ever arrived is super helpful in helping us do things with just three people. I told you we're three people, right? Thanks, Doc. Uh, I've personally been a part of the Knight family since 2007 when they funded my colleague Adrian Holovady uh, for the Every Block Project, Every Block. So uh, we also have a relationship with Cook County, uh, uh, with Simona and, um, and uh, uh, President Preckwinkle to do open data work. Um, we have a contract where that, whereby they provide some revenue uh, and then we add money to it and then we hire uh, a, uh, someone to do their open data work. And that's my biggest mistake so far today. You know, you have that, that fear that you're gonna forget somebody. Freaking Josh Kaloff, why didn't we invite Josh? Where is he? Josh, I know you're out there in the video, I'm sorry. We should have had him come. <laughs> What's the problem? Josh, he's wonderful. Anyway, uh, it was a mistake. You know, you get the list, it's fine. You're wonderful, Josh. Um, if that's my biggest mistake, I think we're okay. Is there someone else? Saying? No, hold on. All right. So he was able to start his own consulting business. These relatively small dollar efforts lead to big results and spark creativity through data. So as you can see, we function as sort of a tech development outfit. All right? What we've discovered in life is that people value technology. So that basically is our, our fundraising strategy, for lack of a better term. Okay? Uh, it's it's kind of crazy. It, it kind of makes sense. Do things people value for a fair price in a way that allows you to keep the lights on and you can keep going. It's actually worked pretty good. It's what I've been doing throughout the course of my career as a web developer, I mean a web strategist. I actually never made anything. Um, I can make web WordPress websites though. Um, and, and, and it's been working. So let's talk about the work. Before we um, talk about any specific uh, projects, um, I really want to talk about this infrastructure stuff, okay? First, a um, couple things that we do. And you're open, by the way, to, to fill out a form if you have a website. If any of these programs sound good to you, hit us up, okay? First is our Amazon Web Services account. We host dozens of app for, apps for civic hackers at a moment's notice and for as long as they want. Steve, you got something running on there. Steve Vance, right? This guy's got a couple apps running on there focused on uh, the built environment and building permits and uh, uh, construction activity in the city of Chicago. And you filled out a form. We host that form every, every month, no problem. Uh, take a look at the bottom of any cool civic app that you like and happen to see, and very likely you'll see the phrase hosted by Smart Chicago Collaborative. This allows us to be helpful at the moment of inspiration, eliminating stoppers, encouraging innovation, it's been a very successful program for us based on the fact that the, the, the bill keeps going up every month. Um, that means that it's working. We also provide project work in office space for developers, designers, writers, project managers um, who toil in the fields we care about. So this is a deliberate strategy for us to be able to stay small, right? Rather than adding staff and increasing our own needs that we'd have to go out and then get money for, we prefer spreading the revenue, power, and growth access to the, to the entire ecosystem. Why should we just get bigger when in fact there are other actors in the ecosystem that should be getting bigger, that should be taking care of problems on their own? We shouldn't exist. The Smart Chicago Collaborative shouldn't exist, okay? It's dumb that we exist. We are a gap organization in many, many ways in a lot of the work that we do. We're just filling in little gaps. So we have to remember that all the time because you could be tempted to think that you're more important than you are because we're just not that big of a deal. Um, so we're founding tenants of 1871, going back to May 2012. We've helped jumpstart a half dozen companies there uh, and have a, uh, places, uh, you know, put a lot of creative people in that mix. 
Um, if you've ever attended Open Gov Hack Night there on a Tuesday, you've received the benefit of that relationship. Uh, this is our role, okay? To be helpful, to provide infrastructure, and be quiet about it. All right, I want to tell you about this thing, the cut group. Anybody here remember the cut group? Raise your hand if you remember the cut group. All right. Everybody here should be a member of the cut group. The cut group. Matt, you're a member, right? The cut group is the civic user testing group. It's a new model for user experience testing, digital skills development, and community engagement in civic tech. We've, we have more than 800 people in the city of Chicago, all the way up and down the entire spectrum of this city. We, that in every ward, in every community, we have a significant amount of people. We give them five bucks, a $5 Visa gift card, just for signing up. And we don't ask them any crazy questions like how much money do you make or what's your educational level. All we want to know is what device you use to connect the internet, what's your secondary device to connect the internet, uh, what, how do you connect to the internet, broadband or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, broadband at home or public computer center. And then we asked two screening questions just for the heck of it. Did you vote in the last election? Have you ever called 311? Have you ever called 311? Raise your hand. Wow. That's good. People like 311. I've noticed this. People call 311. It's good. Uh, so, uh, 311 is awesome, by the way. So I won't, I won't, hear, I won't have anything, uh, I won't hear anything of it. So it's an absolutely foundational program. Once you're done uh, buying all my books, uh, go over to the cut group, sign up. I'll give you five bucks. That sounds bad, right? No, no, that's bad. I was kidding. Whew. Strike that. Um, just sign up, OK? Uh, our, auto, our motto at the cut group is, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. That's a radical thing to, to come to people with. We've learned. We've done this. Sonia runs this program for us now. We we go out. Uh, we did a we did one with Every Block with the Every Block iPhone app. It's crazy. We go into the libraries, and we just get people to come from. We did a test on January 10th, Monday, January 10th. Check it. 2014. It was 10 degrees out. We had people from Roseland taking a bus to go to Rogers Park, Alderman, to the Rogers Park Library to get a $20 gift card and hang out with us. It was amazing. It was a really fun test. Uh, people love the cut group. The cut group's working. Uh, why is it working? Because we listen to them. We don't just throw technology at them. We ask them, where are you from? And they tell us. Here's something that's not a program of Smart Chicago, but I think it's illustrative of the kind of space that we occupy. The Eliminate the Digital Divide grant program of the United Illinois Department of e Commerce and Economic Opportunity is a critical lifeline for community technology centers in Chicago and across the state. I know there's a lot of people here who care about these things, uh, 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 and uh, we all do. Um, the uh, that program has awarded more than $14 million to community technology centers inside the city limits of Chicago since 2007. Quietly. Too quietly. It's critical that we align those funds with other great things that are going on in the realm of digital skills development. This is something that Danielle Dumer, um, a director in uh, Brenna's department, has been working on for years, years and years. She's been tireless in our efforts to get robust policy aligned with all funding sources. We're getting there. We have to think about this in a strategic, focused fashion. We're getting there, but we need your help. <coughs> Another infrastructural project, I'm just going to mention this again, is the Cook County Open Data uh, work. We work directly with the, with the CIO, Simona Rollinson, on this. We all rely on uh, the leadership of President Preckwinkle. But let me put a fine point on this. With very little money, we're able to seed the tech industry with new actors working with emerging tools that allow for the greatest fluidity of data across the ecosystem. These are fundamental projects that, 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 that benefit people other than us um, uh, across the ecosystem. All right, let's talk a little bit about software we've made, and then we'll wrap it up. 
the, we do a lot of project work, um, and we consider this stuff to be infrastructural. You'll see how this all relates. We have an actual philosophy. Somebody, we have a software philosophy. Our software philosophy is to make the smallest amount of software to create the greatest amount of benefit to the largest amount of people in connecting residents to their government, their institutions, and to each other. The key there is the smallest amount of software. Lots of well-meaning organizations can easily lose their way somewhere along that continuum. Let's take a look at a few projects. Foodborne Chicago, how you feel? <laughs> it would be hours from now. I'm sure everything's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's good. Um, uh, I would never disparage the great Magianos. Um, we work with Dr. Shakir and his staff at the Chicago Department of Public Health to troll Twitter for instances of the frayed food poisoning. Um, I say we, but it's really uh, Corey Neeson and Joe Olson, right? Two developers I met through a working group that Brett Goldstein started when he was at the city. Scott Robin developed the admin tool for this, which is used by Ride Monsoor at the health department to reply back to people with a link back to our site, hoping to generate legitimate service requests. So, um, again, I said we, it's not we, it's these other people, we don't own this, we have, there's so many people working on this and it works really well. Um, the site uses the Open 311 system created by the city with the help from Smart Chicago and Code for America to allow any authorized system to read or write directly to the service request system. This is infrastructure, but as you can see, it's also immensely intimate, reaching people right in their Twitter accounts. Based on a grant from the Knight Foundation, we've done some work to determine why people on the south side were less likely to file a service request than people from the north side. We did a cut group test, among other research, and found that people really consider Twitter, notwithstanding their settings on privacy and whether their tweets are protected, people consider their Twitter accounts to be private networks of communication. That was a real revelation to us. Except when you think about it for a minute, we all think this. When I tweet something, I hope that the people I know, I'm, I'm probably thinking of a particular person I want, I'm not talking about subtweets, but just, you know, yeah. You want to reach people, right? It's the people that you know. That makes perfect sense. So, um, you know, they thought we were intruding. Uh, they didn't know who the heck we were. We listened to them. We made some changes to the site, focus around making people sh understood that it was the city, city who would take action. And that we were simply just, just this little connector, again, performing that role, right? That we're this little connector um, and that the city would, would take action. Um, it's led to an, a marked increase in submissions, and we're gonna show that, that research um, uh, soon. Um, asking people where they're from works. <coughs> Chicago Early Learning is a, a great example of a site that we run, uh, we own it, we operate it, but it's super helpful to the real agencies that actually do the work. Okay, I can make any website that, that pulls together all of the places where you can find your child's, uh, find early learning options for your children. I don't run any of them. Uh, this is one of the problems we have is that, that developers and technology people think they're it. We're not it, it's the it is them, the it is you, the it is the, is the, the institutions and the agencies and 311 and the library and CPS and DFSS. They're the ones. We're just trying to create, again, the smallest amount of software that makes the biggest impact in connecting these people to these things. So it really, um, uh, Mayor Manuel um, has been a driving force in this website. And um, he's dedicated to improving, uh, you know, to providing this as a one-stop shop for parents to be informed. And the mayor's uh, open data policies, which have been covered in great detail in, in, in other addresses here, is essential to everything that I, every app that I talk about. That in fact, that policy is working. That policy is delivering on, on, on the promise. We need a lot more work and we need a lot more dedicated focus on making things that matter, but the policy is there. And I think the mayor deserves a lot of credit for that. Chicago Works For You is a citywide dashboard with ward by ward views of service delivery in Chicago. 
allows you to slice, dice, review, and, and view all sorts of data in ways that are meaningful to you. This may be helpful in the coming months, maybe. <laughs> what do I know? I don't know anything. It's one of my greatest qualities. Uh, Chicago Health Atlas. These, all these programs are run by uh, Kyla Williams. Um, and Chicago Health Atlas, you can view citywide information about health trends and take action near you to improve your own health. Um, uh, they're all run by Kyla. They're all funded and conceived by Sprague, as I mentioned. Uh, she also runs our Smart Health Center program, which places uh, trained health information specialists in low-income clinics. <coughs> we have a number of them here um, with us today. Um, and they're out there doing this work. Of, and it would, the, this entire program was based on the cyber navigators model at the Chicago Public Library, which is a groundbreaking and still going and still important program. Um, and this entire program is based on this. Um, so it's assist patients in connecting to their own medical records and find reliable information about their own conditions. Um, it's in 20 locations and it's, and, it's, and it's still going. All right, so check this out. Everything that I've talked about is about people, right? So you can see there are common threads in the projects we do. They're designed for people. They're focused on people. We constantly, however, work with data. We're super careful to remember the people. As a poet, I was greatly, and uh, I discovered one of my poetry professors, Jeff Collard is here today, so that was kind of nice to see. At Haymarket, is that what you're doing? All right. That was, that was a crazy day, that Haymarket rally, yeah. <laughs> Led to a lot of good things. Jesus, including lunch, didn't it? The lunch hour, um, eight hour work day. Anyway, um, so I appreciate that. So I was greatly influenced as a poet by uh, Rod Serling. Twilight Zone was my favorite, but don't forget the night gallery, right? Yeah, it's a sleeper, night gallery, 70s, weird. So it's good stuff. Anyway, there's this famous episode with Burgess Meredith. You ever seen this? Who's seen this episode? All right. He's a librarian. He hates people. Ugh. Wishes they were all gone so we could just read his books. And then, of course, a, a, of course, a neutron bomb goes off because it's a twilight zone. I mean, a neutron bomb always goes off or they're talking about it or something's going to happen. It's the bomb, right? Uh, uh, so uh, he's in the basement, so he's like, he's fine. And he comes out, he's like, whoa, there was a bomb. Whoa, there was all these books. There's no people, and there's all books. It's awesome. He was totally stoked. <laughs> I think that that happens a lot with big data. I think that it often, often happens like that. It's a bunch of beeping machines with no people. I think that's a problem. I think we have to fix that. I don't know how yet. The problem is that people can really be useful. It's the funny thing about people. So when you remember when Burgess Meredith bent down to pick up his first book to read, he dropped his glasses, and then they broke. And there was no one to read to him. They were all dead. We have to remember people. So I just want to talk about two more things. You like this photo? I took all these photos. Did you know that? Um, uh, the Chicago School of Data, or simply the Ecosystem Project. Now, this is this is now. I have two things that I want that I want to engage you on. Please um, uh, talk to me on this. Uh, it was born out of the MacArthur Foundation's great work in funding and shepherding data intermediaries for Chicago nonprofits over the last few decades. Um, in fact, Elena Harkness, um, she's really carried the torch on this. She's shown amazing leadership, and um, and we're getting this done. Uh, September. 19th and 20th. That's coming up. Wow. The discipline of using data to make lives better in Chicago goes back at least as far as Jane Addams at UIC and her work in mapping tuberculosis outbreaks. There's been an increase in the number of sophistication and players in this space. So we've assembled a core working group consisting of the, the city of Chicago, the MacArthur Foundation, uh, Cook County, uh, List Chicago, their leader, uh, Susanna Vasquez. She's been critical. To, uh, to the project, advising us and guiding our work. Lots of our thinking, lots of our thinking over has, out of this has come over the last year in conversations with Commissioner Gaynor 
um, especially in the context of the land bank, in the need for greater fluidity of all sorts of data, including real estate information and ownership information and, and, and all of these processes. This is an enormous uh, uh, milieu. So we've done a lot of outreach and investigation about the state of the ecosystem. We've collected data from almost 200 organizations. Um, this is an example of open, okay? We have sent out mass emails. Turns out if you send an email from Terry Mazzani, people read it. <laughs> you believe this? It works. You wouldn't believe MailChimp? And there's like, you know, open rate, 43%. It's craziness. This guy works. Um, uh, data. You can learn a lot from data. Anyway, um, so we've collected data from almost 200 organizations, had deep conversations with more than 70 of them. We're having a conference. Uh, you're all invited. There's going to be a huge party, too. Parties are fun, right? The JW Marriott on the Friday night. You don't have to come to the, you don't have to be, uh, you could be sick at school that day and still come to the party. Remember that? It's like, I don't feel good, and then you want to go to the dance. Come on, you can't. It's poor form. Uh, 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 since I'm a, a graduate of DePaul College Prep, okay, along with my colleague Barry Rogers from the great north side, although he moved on to other pastures, uh, we know how to act, okay? You got to go to school and then you can go to the dance or the Battle of the Bands or whatever it is. They still have Battle of the Bands? It's awesome. All right, um, so you can come to the party. If you have any inkling, any inkling, that what we're saying speaks to you, um, uh, you should come. So uh, all of this will end up in a book in 2015. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, actually the, the, the discussion of what I, what I titled this, this address. We have a chance to make Chicago the most dynamic digital city in the world. The work that we do at Smart Chicago, the amazing work um, at the Chicago Public uh, Library, um, that Brian Bannon has been uh, uh, doing uh, it, where they provide uh, public computing to everyone who, uh, all comers, right? Uh, the innovative cyber navigator programs uh, that uh, needs more money, right, Rona? Absolutely. Rona phrase, I'm going to pound the table for cyber navigators. <laughs> uh, program uh, started under the, under the leadership of Mary Dempsey. Um, and I'm telling you, it is a killer. It is an amazing program. It's in half the libraries. They work 20 hours a week. It should be all libraries, 80 hours a week, two people, flooded, okay? Uh, so uh, the proven model of, of LISC's smart uh, communities uh, run uh, by Susanna and Dion Bo was uh, uh, doing amazing work over the course of the last few years with uh, federal uh, broadband technology opportunities program money. Um, that smart communities program led to a marked increase in broadband adoption in Chicago neighborhoods. It made a real difference, a difference that we can measure, a difference that we should continue. Um, the immense work of DFSS, City Colleges, Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership, uh, hundreds of people toiling in community centers. We have an enormous base of investment there. We really are the envy of the nation when it comes to these programs, and we have to support them. We need more. We need to invest in startups and incubators. As you saw today, I come from this world um, and I inhabit it pretty easily now. Yeah, we have to do that. But we have to care about everyone else on all of the on-ramps. We have to care as much about people getting an email account for the first time as we do the people who are trying to start email-based businesses. We have to invest in the digital skills of seniors at the same time we're recruiting seniors out of computer science programs at universities. We have to service people who need a resume to start their lives over as much as we do people who need capital to start a startup. No matter where you are, you matter in this city. Your digital life matters in this city. We need the power of the entire network, the entire city, the entire region, the entire state, the entire internet, to have the power of technology meaningfully affect the lives of residents. When I was a poet, I toured around the country doing performances and selling books. I had a shtick that I used. 
I'd show people my latest book and acknowledge that there are lots of perfectly good reasons why you wouldn't buy my book. And I was certainly okay with that. But I wanted them, I was certainly okay with that, but I would just ask them to give me the courtesy of telling me to my face that they didn't want to buy my book. And it worked, because it's kind of funny. Uh, it always got a laugh. I'd end up having great conversations with people who told me to my face. It's, always, it's good. Tell me to my face that they would not buy my book. So all I ask when I leave this dais is that you tell me, where are you from? And we'll go from there. Thanks. Uh, a time for a couple of questions. Uh, wave your hand. No tweets. You got to actually write it out. And I, Mr. X, I think they've all. Uh, how about a big round of applause for our speaker? Yay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold your applause. We have a question. And it's a doozy. Build it up a little bit. Oh, by the way, Joyce Saxon, City Club Board Member, Mary Sue Barrett, Metropolitan Planning Council. A slight slip in my intros. Here's the question. Laura, Laura Lane, Partnership for a Connected Illinois. All these positive things, you know, there's no... How can City Club attendees, well, this is a setup. How can City Club attendees invest in this work? The top three ways, each one 25 words or less. Uh, thanks, Laura. Laura is a great colleague on the uh, Eliminate the Digital Divide Advisory Committee. How can City Club attendees invest in this work? Uh, the top three ways. Uh, I think I pounded the table hard enough for cyber navigators. Um, I, I, <laughs> uh, I think that, that that's a, a, a really great program. And I think that um, even more to the point, uh, there is a paucity of coordination and organization and strategy attached to all of this work that I think it's necessary for, uh, uh, for us to have an easier answer to that. I know it's important, um, and I know uh, that, uh, you know, as I said at the end, lots of people are working really hard to uh, provide that kind of strategy and thinking and leadership, and I would just, just suggest uh, more to come. Last question. Uh, Ellen, is that Federholtz? Federholtz, no R. No R. Oh, Federholtz. Federholtz. Um, this is perfect, given your, given your name. You should have a snappy answer to this one. Why are places like Tel Aviv going to the coast and not here? New York Times wrote about it yesterday. Uh, I don't have a good answer to that. Um, why are they drawn to the coast? Um, oh, oh, I understand. Right, right. Um, I think that uh, it, it's a complex. It's a complex question. Um, we're trying to solve it in Chicago next, which is the mayor's. Um, I, I, program for, uh, you know, on the web and mobile committee to think about how to draw more uh, computer science people um, here to Chicago. I think, uh, based on my own experience in life, and you'll probably agree, there's only two reasons that anybody will go anywhere. One is love and the other is money. So, you know, you get a job or you fall in love with someone, so we need more love and money probably would be the, the answer to that. And um, Loving each other is good. You also, speaking of names, happen to be sitting at the table with some Malloys. Uh, you know, my, uh, uh, my cousin, you're my cousin. You know, if you're married into the O'Neill family, you can't get out. What are you doing? This is the, the former CIO of the city of Chicago, uh, Beth Malloy. Uh, and she's my, what, what is it? You're married to, you were? Was married to your first Wonderful. She's an O'Neill. That's all you need to know. Whoa.